of times I, I go on a bus because it's something different and a different experience rather than driving in my own van. I go on a Greyhound bus. I meet a lot of interesting people. And sometimes I go, I try to go on all the two lane roads and stay off of the interstates. There's not really a whole lot to see because it's almost all desert. But every time you go on the same road, you will see something different. Breakfast in town every day, just for breakfast and coffee. Yeah. This is like a retirement community, and and they're uh, they've come from areas where they're they keep their doors locked, they keep their windows closed, and you know they get out of the car and they lock the car. They come in here from environments where they have to live under lock and key which is I don't know about other countries but most in big cities in this country you lock yourself away from reality out of fear for some reason it wasn't like that a hundred years ago I don't think but it is now and so then they move here and they get to learn about each other as their neighbors and those those fears go away as you live in a small smaller community where you learn that people are not bad on a whole, people are, are much nicer in smaller communities. So, yeah, I don't think I would want to go back to Chicago or California to live permanently. I'd like to even live in a smaller community than this, you know, like 500 instead of 3,500. That's what you learn over a period of time. Get in the trusty van and see if it starts. I'm not really a good mechanic, but if I know what's wrong, I can fix it. If I don't know what's wrong, I can't figure it out.
I moved here to like have a a base. Like a lot of people, older people get a motorhome and they drive around the country in a motorhome, but they don't have a permanent address. This is where I get all my mail. This is where I have all my garbage, all my stuff. Got to remember, one man's trash is another man's gold. And from here I go that way, or from here I go that way. And then I always come back to the same place. From here I also go to Phoenix by my brother's house. And I go down there. Halfway between there and here there's a little place called Nothing, Arizona. Population four. You think, this is a small place. And it's on the maps. It says Nothing, Arizona on the maps. Population four. It's an old couple in their 70s, late 70s. And then they have two other people that live there that are younger that drive a tow truck. And that's that, that's the whole town. It's just like a tow truck place. Mm -hmm. They sell they sell beer and Coke and potato chips. It's like a mini mart, but it's like one tenth of what a mini mart has. The only thing I have to be in touch with society right now is my telephone. Almost always have a generator. That's my mom and dad. That's, see the little black dogs? Those are pugs. <laughs> I have one sister. She lives in Florida, that's what, 3,000 miles away? So that's good. I call her and talk to her about once every two weeks. That's my, my brother and, me, and myself. When I worked, I always lived like in a big city like Chicago or Anaheim or Las Vegas. And I installed carpet and tile and wood. And I've been doing that 35 years. I've done other things. I drove an armored truck for a year. That was an interesting job, drive an armored truck. I was a waiter for a while. I worked in a bank in big cities. When all my friends were going to college, I, was, I got drafted and went into the Marine Corps. And I drank too much in those days. And then I just did floors. Because... That's what I was good at. Now I don't have to do anything. Just remember, when you work when you're young, you always save a little bit of money. And then you can live off what you've earned. And don't think the government will take care of you, because they won't. <laughs> Governments are not set up to help poor people, or take care of poor people. As a poor person, I take care of myself. So that's what I think. Almost all governments are the same. I don't care what kind it is. They're all the same. Most people in this country think that they have to rule other people. And they think that you have to follow all the rules and all the rules are made for all the people. And that's not true. That's not, that's not fair and that's not right the way I think. So you have to you have to learn when to follow a rule and when to, to try to not follow a rule but not be bad. You know, for some weird reason they had to make a, a rule that if you're in a desert and you ask somebody for water, they have to give it to you. You know, that's really stupid. You know, if you're in a desert and you need water, you, you give somebody water. Why should there be a rule for it? I mean, you know, it's just common sense. And I think for some reason, the richer people get, the less common sense they have. So, I'm real poor, so I think I have a lot of common sense. <laughs> so the poor get poorer, the rich get richer, and the middle class gets smaller. And if that and that's history, and that repeats itself. And uh, so I try to stay away from politics. I think, as a pencil pusher, those guys in power try to do the best they can. 
But you got to remember, they do the best they can for the economical people that they're involved with, not us poor people. And so we suffer. Or, or in my case, I just go along and do fine by myself. In America, we have little towns that go other places to buy food, like in big towns. Almost all of us go to another big city to, to shop. We go to Kingman or we go to Las Vegas. We go to big food stores where they have a lot of processed food, which isn't good for us. So people in, in a lot of foreign countries where you eat simpler, eat better, and are more healthy. I eat too much candy, though. That's why I'm about 60 pounds overweight. But I'm, I'm not diabetic or anything, and I'm in good health. Well, not really. I have a bad back. I have arthritis of the spine, what the doctors call degenerative arthritis of the spine. If these are the bones of your spine, this one is gone. This one is cracked. These two are rubbing together, and these two are almost rubbing together. And they should have cushion in between all those. But they're all falling down on each other and rubbing. They want to fuse those together on me. I don't want them to. And I don't take any pills. You know, I just put up with the pain. There are days when I can't get out of bed. But I just don't get out of bed. Those are pretty few. But I have some canes. This was my great-grandfather who made this. These are the Canadian oak leaves. And he, he was a, a woodworker. He made furniture. And these are all carved Canadian oak leaves on there. One of the problems that America will see in the future is health problems. I think if I was 20 years old today and going to college, I would get into the health industry. Nursing homes or, you know, something like that. There will be, there will be lots of money made in that field. I think no matter what you do in life, you have to have a happy medium. And you can't be real strict in one thing. I live, I live near the Colorado River. You gotta have a boat. This is my canoe. Loneliness is a state of mind. You can be in a, at a party and be lonely. Out here, it's not like... I think being lonely is when you're not happy with any given place with yourself that makes you lonely. And I don't care if you're single or married or have four kids in in back of the car yelling at you driving down the freeway, you can still be lonely. Lonely is a person's inability to accept their reality, I believe, for a daily, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. I think that's what makes people depressed if they can't accept their realities of where they're at in life on a daily basis. They get depressed and they get lonely. And I think loneliness and depression run pretty close. So to, to stay happy, do things that you enjoy. Myself, I enjoy playing chess. I have a little chess computer. I have lots of tools. I like to do things with tools. I make There's some little wooden toys that I make, that little game puzzles. Well, in the summertime, when I have my electric saw running, I make puzzles. So those are the types of things that I do that I, they make me happy and they keep me from being depressed and being lonely. I ride my bicycle out here. I, j I have one right behind us, but I also just took one to California to my mom's house because I've been going there so much. 
I have something to do when I go there. Mm. So yeah, if you keep busy, do a little thing there, a little thing here, you don't worry about being lonely, even if you are by yourself. 